got another question here. This one is from Renee. This is Renee from Ocala, Florida. I have always wanted to keep a journal. I don't have the greatest memory, but I love to look back on moments. Um, how do you feel about journaling, digital versus physical, especially in this day and age with everything being digital? Like I work an eight to five job where I sit at a computer all day and know if this is harming my eyes or um, if a physical approach would be more of a better suit. Well, during our More About Less segment today, I've got this essay from Kapil Gupta, and it totally changed my mind about how we think about memories. Now, for the longest time, of course, I thought the same way everyone thought about memories. I wouldn't let go of my things because, oh, I don't want to let go of my memories, right? And so I would hold on to those things, not realizing that the memories aren't in the things, the memories are in me. In fact, you saw that in our last Netflix film, Less Is Now, when I talk about our memories not being in the things, the memories being inside us. And it is possible to let go of a thing and still retain the memory. Kapil takes it even a step further, which we'll see later today on the private podcast here. What Kapil shows you is that, well, you don't really need those memories necessarily. A person who enjoys the now needn't cling to memories for happiness. Now, as soon as I say that, someone's going to say, oh, but my memories, I love my memories. Okay, I'm not telling you to get rid of memories. I'm simply saying that memories are often a way for us to cling to mm. the way things were. It's the disease of nostalgia. And that is often when we cling to those memories, we cling to the things. So journaling for me, if it's just a way to cling to memories... I don't find it to be particularly useful for me. However, where I do find journaling to be interesting and useful is if it helps me discover how I think about something. If it helps me better understand a situation about my life or a greater truth about the world or a situational truth, then I don't call it journaling. I just write. I write every morning. And I don't care about the vehicle. Often, I teach a writing class at howtowritebetter.org, and often students will ask something, and Professor Sean can attest to this, like, what pen do you use? Yeah. What journal do you use? As though if I, you handed me Stephen King's pencil, I'm going to write the book Carrie. No, of course I'm not. It is just a tool, and he didn't need that particular pencil. I saw an ad the other day in the Paris Review, which is my favorite quarterly publication. And it was an ad for a really expensive pen, a Mont Blanc pen, right? <laughs> and I'm sure they're really nice. I bet you they write really well. Yeah. But the ad was pretending that if I have the Mont Blanc pen, then I am the type of person who can pin something that is mm. everlasting, that is true, that is mm. profound. And thus, without it, yeah. then I cannot be the writer that I want to be. I can't be the best version of myself. So yes, I write every day. I was writing early this morning and it helps me figure out what I think about the world. It helps me better understand the world, but I don't do it to cling to my memories. Yeah. I bought a uh, pair of Mont Blanc sunglasses like a decade ago. You remember that? Yes. When we were in Chicago. They fell apart like a year and a half later. Anyway. They look nice. Aww. They did look really nice. Yeah. Just like a pin though, right? Right. And now, it, now what if you said, <clears throat> without those sunglasses, I can no longer go out into the sun. Right. I can't see the world as good yeah. <laughs> as well as if I didn't have the Mont Blanc sunglasses. No, it is, it is crazy how specifically with something like Mont Blanc, like it really is just built on a name, which is built from marketing and advertising and there are there are some good pens i mean i'm not a pen enthusiast but mm -hmm. i hear that they do a good job but it really comes down to that perceived value that they're making you think it's worth um but to your point it's like you could write as good of a paragraph with this pen i have in my hand here or a mont blanc pen yes and i would argue that the mont blanc while it may be a technically a better writing utensil sure. Yeah. If you become dependent on it, mm. now all of a sudden it's Ooh, clutter. Not, yeah. Because it, uh, this pen that I have right here, this is a Pilot G2. Mm -hmm. uh, the, it's a size 10. That's the, the 
the thickness of the ink. These are the kind we use here in the studio. This is the kind I typically use. It's a great pen. Yeah. It serves me better than the Mont Blanc. Why? Yeah. Not because of the pen, because I never worry about it. If this thing gets lost today, mm-hmm. I just pick up another Pilot G2 and it's not yeah. a problem. And if you have to have a Mont Blanc pen to write a good paragraph, like how limiting is that? It's so Ooh. limiting. Yeah. Professor Sean. Um, I, I will see that Mont Blanc fountain pens are beautiful fountain pens, but it's funny because yes. you just held up a Pilot G2 and Pilot makes a beautiful fountain pen that mm. is, I don't know, one fifth, one sixth, one tenth the price of a Mont Blanc fountain pen. Yeah. I've owned one for like a decade and it's, it's my journaling pen when I rarely journal mm. and it's great. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What's your writing utensil, TK? I don't even pay attention to those details. <laughs> he just but, pricks his finger and writes in blood. <laughs> but but that, that doesn't mean I'm so sophisticated that I don't pay attention. It means I'm so unsophisticated yeah. that I don't really know the difference uh, well, when yeah. it comes to stuff like that. It means that. that you don't put up barriers in front of yourself to write. Like, could you imagine getting up and being like, oh, it's time to write. Oh, no, where's my Mont Blanc pen? I don't have it. Yes. And now, like, I can't write because I don't have a, a specific pen. I'm like Eminem in 8 Mile. I'd just be, like, writing on the back of napkins. <laughs> With yes. whatever pan is handy. <laughs> a, it has ink in it. <laughs> there was a Michelle Branch album, I think. It, it was called Hotel Paper. And I, she had written all the lyrics so while mm. she was touring on hotel paper, right? Mm. Just like, because when you go to stay at a hotel, a lot of times they have this little cheap pad of paper there and a cheap <laughs> little Bic <Yeah>. pen. <laughs> but she created an entire body of work. I love it. With the things that are perceived to be That's throwaway. Cool. Because ultimately, it's all throwaway anyway. Mm. All of the memories on a long enough timeline, they're all throwaway. Yeah. All of the accessories we have to capture those memories, whether it's the the nicest binder or the nicest notebook or the nicest pen, it's all throwaway at the end of the day. Did you enjoy this standalone Patreon highlight? If so, you can listen to full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, available exclusively on Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash the minimalists or click the link in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free.